Hey everybody, welcome back to Burn Rubber Garage. Today I'm going to bring you a topic I kind of touched on early last year, and I guess with the, uh, the new year happening, people are starting to want to maybe hit some goals or set some goals as in owning an older vehicle. Uh, I guess I, they've reached out to me because I own a lot of old junk. So, uh, I don't know why I call it junk. Some of them were when I got them, but uh, most everything I have, I enjoy. And I did a lot of research, so I wanted to share with you today some of the things that can really help you find a legit car. Uh, the individual that reached out to me was talking about a, uh, a duster. And he said, it's 16000 what do you think? And I said, there's so much more to it than price. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things you've got to look at uh, as far as, uh, is it rusty? Uh, how, how are the panels? How's the, the lines? How's the motor? How's the trans? How's the rear end? How's the brakes? How are the tires? There's so much more to it than just uh, giving me a title to a car. Uh, let's just say, in this case, a Pontiac GTO and a price, price frame. Uh, I need a little more than that. But there's a few things I want to point out to you that you can do to get ready to make that, uh, that jump. And sometimes you may have your eyes set on a GTO, but maybe you don't have that kind of money, so you want to start out with, uh, you know, maybe a, a Firebird or something. You found a good deal on something. And I'm not saying Firebirds are bad. I hope to own one soon. Um, I'm just saying the Firebird can be a little cheaper than the GTO, depending on the years. Um, one of the big things you can do is once you get in your mind what kind you, you want, or what car you want, or truck in that case, uh, say the C10, for example, there are a lot of forums you can join, whether they're uh, like on the Facebook platform or a legit C10 forum that's got its own website and everything. That's the first place I would probably start. Uh, I'd get on there. Uh, usually somebody's asked. If not, ask again. People love to talk about their stuff. Uh, hey, what are some problem areas when you're hunting for a, a GTO or a C10? Where's the rust spots? What are the known weak points? Where should I be looking? Uh, the other thing you can do is just Google that. Uh, known rust issues, 67, 72 C10, 69 GTO, 68 Camaro. Uh, look into it because there are trouble spots and people have found them and they share that. That is knowledge you want to have. That is knowledge I try to give myself uh, before I go. Am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. But it's one of the big things you can do to get ready to go look at a car. And it's, it's huge. So if you're just going out to buy the first car you see, that's the other mistake I see made. Uh, they see a car, they look at it, pictures for a while, they fall in love before they even actually see the car in person. And, you know, maybe a color that they saw growing up that they had to have. Uh, a car that you love before you even see it, you can overlook a lot of things just because you want it, you've got to have it. Um, I know a couple of times I fell in love with a car and purchased it and uh, didn't do the research properly. You know, one of those is that uh, uh, Dodge Challenger. If I can find a picture, I'll throw it up here. Uh, some of the restoration that went on with that car. And it was cool. Freaking looked cool. Just, uh, I love the color. I love the look. Uh, I had eyed it for a couple weeks before I even contacted them. I went and saw it. Uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't check a lot of stuff. Which leads me to the reason why that car didn't last long. The parts for that car were quite a bit more than, say, a Camaro or a Mustang, or even a C10. These are readily available, easy to have, and cheaper. And maybe the times have changed. It's been a lot of years since I had that car. And I don't know. I, I really like that car. Some days I still kick myself for selling, saying you just should have let it just sit, and you could have uh, got back with it. But if you do your research, you'll know what to look for. The other thing I want to tell you to do. I've got a whole bunch of other things I'm going to tell you. Uh, go look at a couple of them. Uh, and I always say this, but be prepared for what can happen. So let's say you've got a car. We're looking, let's use his, uh, his duster, for example. It's 16000 That's your budget. I would say go look at a 10000 if you can find one. The sixteen you want to see and a 20000 the reason being on the 20000 is, is generally the higher the price, the better the quality. It may not be the case, but you want to go look at a little nicer car. Use it as a baseline. Uh, does that individual need to know that you probably can't afford his car? No, he doesn't, because you could still pull it off. If you go see it and it absolutely needs nothing, which is, is rare and usually doesn't hold true, maybe at that given moment it doesn't, but after 100 miles it might break something. You might be in better shape and save a lot of money just spending that little bit of extra and holding off for a bit. 
But go look at it. Get a baseline for what you, what you can see and then compare it to that car that you initially wanted. Not to mention the guy that's at 20,000 may come down a bit. Uh, you may be able to trade him a firearm or a, a mini bike or something and get that price where you want it if you have something to barter up with. Uh, it's, that's a big one, is to go look at a couple of cars. There's been a couple of them I just went out and bought. There's been others that I've hunted, like th this GTO here. Uh, I looked at a couple of Chevelles. I looked at a couple of GTOs. I looked at uh, a Roadrunner, which was way out of my budget. Uh, I looked at a Charger, again, out of my budget. And, uh, and then I stumbled upon this deal, and apparently this thing was just a good price and very clean. Uh, there's no rust. Everything's in good shape. Uh, other than that fuel injection system, which uh, eventually, if I take it off, I'll throw a carb on it. But uh, I bought this, I checked the tires, I checked underneath it. I mean, everything about this GTO is mint. It's amazing. And to say that about a car, I mean, yeah, when you get up to the, up there in the value, you should be getting a good car. But there are some challengers and stuff that are eighteen, twenty thousand $20,000, and they're not even running and driving. I mean, or a CUDA. I mean, you're up there, you can be 30000 for a roller that needs body work, motors out of it. And, uh, so know what you're getting into. One of the other things you can definitely do, NADA Classic Cars, there's some other ones out there, I think Haggerty has one. Uh, go check the value of these. Uh, NADA is usually what a bank uses to check the value of one of these. And honestly, a lot of banks will only loan on the low. So when you go look at that NADA Classic, you've got a low, an average, and a high retail. Uh, something like this will go between high and average. Uh, I bought this for less than average. So I found a nice deal, at least I felt I did. Uh, I know I could turn around and probably make 10,000 10, off of this car. Uh, the C10, I bought it at low and now could probably go above average. Um, like I said, last year I bought... Uh, I, guess it was, I think it was last year, might have been before, I bought that orange truck without a bed at low as well. And I think once I get a bed on, especially if it's painted and the LS swaps are hot, uh, that's going to be worth quite a bit of money too. Probably a $25,000, $30,000 truck, depending on what else you do to it. Uh, banks seem to stress over these things. They, they worry about these old cars, and I don't fully understand it. Uh, when you go buy a new vehicle and drive it off the lot, that thing depreciates hard, whereas on an old car, I've never lost my shorts. I've never lost money. Uh, I had that Project Challenger I kind of talked about earlier. I put my time into it. Uh, I put the parts that it came with that he just didn't have time to do on it. I sold it for more than I did, still without it fully running and driving. I mean, it would start up when I got done with it. The motor was just shot. So I still came out of that okay. Uh, old cars, when you put time into it, like with Frostbite here or the GTO, you put time into it, you clean them up, detail them, you can usually get your money back. So that's why I recommend getting one if you're on the fence. And a lot of people have reached out this year already. We're only 15, 20 days into the month, whatever it is. Man, go do it. Jump. Go get you one. Uh, make sure you get a good deal because if you get a good deal like I have on that or this you can always get back out from under it especially if you've upgraded it and improved it so that's a big one go look at value value of the car can give you peace of mind hey I can get back out of it the closer you are towards the low retail expect to have some things you need to fix every now and then you'll find something that's just a freaking gem and somebody just needs to dump it Definitely, that's a good one to get. But be, be, be aware that somebody, maybe they just don't know the value, a cheaper car usually is going to have more issues. That's why it's cheaper. It might need some body work, might need paint, might need motor, trans, has issues. Uh, a more expensive car generally will have less issues. I'm not going to say no issues. Almost every old car will end up having something wrong with it. Fully restored cars can, can leave guys high and dry. A lot of you guys watch car shows like I do. And man, you can, they get it all done, they go to turn it up for a customer and it won't turn. Uh, fuel pump's bad, they got a bad one from the, you know, things go out, things happen. So don't blow all your budget on the car because you're going to need to fix something. Uh, the other thing I do if you have time, and with maybe 2021 we'll have more opportunity, 
to do this, go to a car show. And if you see somebody, let's say you roll up here and you've got the guy with his GTO and this is what you want, start talking to him about it. People love to talk about their cars. They will give you everything. Be like, hey, what were some of the things you looked for when you bought this? Maybe he bought it all stripped down. And he can be like, well, you're going to have some potential for rust here, rust back there, and you know, the door jams, the rockers. I mean, you get, you're going to get a lot of good info. Hey, watch out for this. People tend to do this, which makes it look better than it is. Uh, they can buy a, a Ram Air 4 kit, and then the value's through the roof. Most people that are spending that kind of money on a, a Ram Air 2, 3, 4, whatever, uh, they usually got the documentation, the PHS paperwork to back up what they got, because they're going to be asking sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars for one of those, especially if it's got a four-speed in it. Um, but a car show is a really good spot to go to. It's, I'd say it's as good of a little more personable uh, than uh, online. But online, man, you're going to make some good friends online. Uh, you're going to start to comment. You're going to start to gain knowledge, and you can comment, help others, and it just the cycle continues, which is. It's just awesome. So that's, that's, that's kind of some of the things I would recommend doing, especially if you have time. But if you need to have one today, do as much research as you can before you go look at the car. I would definitely look for trouble areas and then look at them on the car. Uh, if that's one thing you did, I would look for common issues or trouble areas with rust and stuff. And at least look at that. If you've got to have a car today, most people don't have to have a car same day and they've got a little leeway. But there'll be those times when you get your mindset, hey, I'm snagging a project car. The one pops up within a couple days and you're like, oh my gosh, it's too soon. I want to see a couple cars, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you may go out on your first one and just be like, this is it. And that's awesome. When you get that good feeling about it, uh, go for it. The other thing I've run into and people kind of ask me about, how do you fix stuff if you don't have a, like a really good mechanical knowledge or background? And to that I say, if you're going to fix it, Try and fix it. Now, if it's way over your head, don't. The worst thing that can happen, let's say, let's use frostbite here. Let's say that fuel pump went out and I hadn't done one before. I screw it up. Well, guess what? Yes, you're probably going to have a little higher cost because it's probably going to have to be towed. But if it's not running anyway, it's probably going to have to be towed to the shop anyway. So give it a shot. Read up about it. Watch videos. Take what you can take from someone else and then apply it to the car because worst case scenario is... If you fix it, you just save yourself a ton of money that you can put somewhere else or have for the next problem. But if you go to fix it, let's say that rod falls out and you can't get it back in with the pump because the cylinder's not all the way up, uh, it's going to get towed to the shop anyways, right? It wasn't running. The fuel pump wasn't working. Uh, you just give it a shot. Give it a shot. Jump in. Uh, lean on your friends in the forum and in your chats and at the car show. Make some friends. These cars will do wonders for you when you go out and about. When you're at a car show, someone will come up and be like, man, I know so-and-so had one, or I had one. It's like an instant bond, just like that. It's a very cool community. Not all the time is it perfect. There are some people who are just crabby, and uh, honestly, they're not going to come talk to you anyways. So with that, I've got one or two more things I want to tell you, and then uh, hopefully you'll have some happy hunting out there. A couple of things I want to give you as a tool when you're messaging on the vehicle or calling on it. Uh, ask a couple of questions. I think there's three questions I ask, and it's just because that's what I really, um, these have suited me well to figure out and make sure that's a car I want to go see. Uh, one of them is, what does it need? Uh, and usually people be honest. They may not. They may not be honest. They may have done a bandage fix and eventually it's going to need it. But a lot of them will be like, man, it's got a crack in the windshield. Um, the heater doesn't work. I think it's just a fuse, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things, but usually you can get a good idea and at least go, okay, I'm going to need uh, 500 bucks. If it's worst case scenario, i got to replace everything there, the heater core, uh, the fan blower, the housing. Uh, could just be as simple as uh, putting a new blower motor in. I mean, those aren't really simple on some of these. you got to bring the fenders. But anyways, uh, the other one is if you didn't sell it and you were to keep it, what else would you do to it? Uh, that's a trick question in, in such that uh, they're proud of their car generally. Not all the time. Some people absolutely hate their car. That's why they're selling it. They didn't enjoy it. Uh, ask them that. And they'll usually be like, well, if I were to keep it, I'd probably throw a different set of wheels on it. Um, some people might say, I'd probably go fuel injection, man. I'd love to have it just go out and crank right up instead of uh, playing the hot, cold carburetor game. Uh, 
Uh, some people might say, you know, I'd probably uh, go ahead and redo the interior. I mean, something like that. They usually give you a dream for their car, and you can also see how passionate they are about it. Some people really don't want to sell their car, but you know what? It's not getting used. It's sitting, and they can use the money somewhere else. They still have love for that car, and they had goals and dreams like you're going to with it as well. Uh, the other one I really like to ask is, how does it do going down the highway, say 55 miles an hour? Is it really spinning up? Is it... And some people will be honest with you and say, oh, you're going to be cruising at 2,500 RPM, 3,000. That's high. To me, that's high. But with a three-speed, what do you do? Uh, others might say, you're, uh, it'll do her. Uh, how's the steering as you're going down? Is it kind of all over the road? Uh, is the wind whipping around? Uh, just, those are the three questions I always ask. There's others about it. But the other thing I want to tell you is when you're, when you're going this, what are your planning goals for it? Because that's something you've got to factor into your budget. Uh, what do you hope to do with it? What do you uh, want to do to it immediately? Because there's always going to be something. You need to, when you buy something like this, you need to personalize it. Somehow make it yours. Uh, it makes it, uh, it's like sparks motivation in you to keep it going and keep making it yours. Whereas if you just buy someone else's and you don't even touch it, uh, it's a lot easier to lose focus on it because you're not as excited to make it yours. Uh, the GTO, I mean, just cleaning it got me excited about it. Hoping for new wheels, uh, get that fuel injection dialed in. I'm going to make it good. The last guy dealt with a dirty interior, a poorly idling car, and running for the most part. And he loved these wheels, which I don't mind them. I just want a bigger, more modern set of wheels on it to make it mine. Uh, yes, it's not cheap, and it hasn't happened because I've been putting money into some other stuff, but... Uh, know what you want to do, know what your goals are, and then be realistic about hitting those. If you've got a budget of twenty thousand and you spent eighteen on the car, you've only got two k to play with. That might be wheels and tires, and then you're done. Uh, you didn't leave yourself any room to upgrade a few other odds and ends or fix what needs to be fixed. Uh, so just just plan on that. And the biggest thing I can tell you, because I've been there, don't settle. Do not settle just because. Let's use the GTO. You know what? Let's use this guy. The GTO gets all the love. Uh, let's use Frostbite here. This truck is amazing, and I love it. But let's pretend this is a pile of crap, and it's the only thing out there that's a step side short bed on the market right now. Don't settle. Don't settle. Something else will pop up. Join those groups, and a lot of those groups you can put, hey, looking for a uh, 67, 72, or maybe that's the actual group it is. It's not just a C10 in general group. Uh, looking for a 6772 step side short bed with a V8. See what people got. Uh, who's got one for sale? People do it all the time. Uh, I'm in a Cummins group, and people are always like, you know, I've got 12K in my pocket. Uh, what's for sale? What's for sale? What's for sale? And the person that's got 12K probably really has 15, but they want to come in low and try and get a deal. Uh, but don't settle. There will be other cars that come out. Trust me on this. More vehicles pop up every day. Don't settle. That's When you sell, you're not going to be happy with it. You're not going to have the motivation to fix it. And it's going to end up either sitting as a shelf or just kind of rotting away until you dump it. And at that point, you may actually lose money. It's one of the few times I've seen people lose money is they settle. They got something that they, uh, uh, let's say in this truck right here, I really wanted a, a short bed, but it's a long bed. And I just, I don't love it. So it's just going to sit. Chances are, uh, you may be like, I'm going to cut it down. That's a lot of work. And then you got to get a bed. you got to cut the frame. you got to get a shorter drive shaft. There's a lot of things you've got to do to do that. So know what you're getting yourself into. But for sure, don't settle. Something will pop up. And I, I know I'm, I've got a bad habit of looking. So like, let's say I just bought Frostbite. Uh, and it's been a couple weeks. I still keep looking and I compare. Hey, that's new out there right now. Is that better than what I bought? Ooh. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, I know a lot of you have reached out this year. And by a lot of you, I say five or six, which considering uh, people looking for specific old cars reaching out, that's actually pretty good. So uh, hopefully this helps. Hopefully you watch it. And uh, if you have any other questions, throw them down there. I've got a lot of good followers that will help you answer questions, maybe not on your specific vehicle, but uh, on NADA classic car values, how to do this, how to do that, uh, hit us up. Uh, there's a lot of good people following this channel. I want to thank each and every one of you. If you can't hit subscribe, I can't wait for the next video. I apologize that these probably are going to seem a little out of order. 
Uh, my computer went down. I got it back, so I got my 2020 posted. Uh, I've got one that's waiting to go out. I just I didn't feel like it was right. I wanted to make this video due to people uh, reaching out to me. All right, I thought I'd take a minute, kind of show you this. It's been a little while. We'll definitely get you back into this for good. But this is the goal of any project. Turn the key. See your gauges move. Fires right up. Definitely did not do that when I bought it. So uh, with that, again, thank you so much. If you can, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. And uh, happy project hunting. We'll see you on the next one. Listen to this, though. Do you not want to hear that? when you get in your project. Gosh, that thing is mean. Woo! All right, guys, I just got back from, it was only like a 15 minute cruise, but if your project car doesn't put a smile on you when you drive it, you need to find another one. Because uh, it should just take away the stress. Let's say it's Friday afternoon, you leave work a little early, you go get in your car and just go for a cruise. It should melt that stress away, so. With that, I know I've said goodbye a time or two. I'll probably cut a lot of them out. But uh, again, thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks for watching. Get you some of that. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one.